So look at that precious boy. He is missing tonight in Boise, Idaho. Police in Boise, Idaho say there are suspicious circumstances in the disappearance of eight-year-old Robert Manuel. Police and hundreds of volunteers are in the middle of their most exhaustive search yet for Robert. The evidence we've uncovered shows that there are suspicious circumstances regarding Robert's disappearance. It isn't clear what they found or what they were looking for. This is Robert's bear that has always been close to his heart. And our family would love to reunite them together. Please do what you can to help. It's the response from this community, Robert's family, and the shy smile of that little boy on the missing poster that keeps this investigators going. I'm Jean Casares of the Legal Network in session in for Nancy Grace tonight. There is some brand new news coming out of Idaho in the case of a missing eight-year-old, precious Robert Manuel. Let's go straight out to Greg Hahn, editor of the Idaho Statement. Greg, what happened in the last 24 hours? Well, as more than more than 2,000 volunteers scoured the part of town where uh, Robert went missing, uh, the police so police did announce a pretty significant change in what in what they've been saying. They said. For the first time, they found some evidence that showed there were some suspicious circumstances, they said, around his disappearance. Uh, and they said that, uh, I'm quoting here, that he may be the victim of a tragic event. And they told the searchers to kind of expand their ideas beyond the, uh, looking for a hiding boy and into looking for things that might lead them uh, to, to more than that, and perhaps not the happy ending that everybody was looking for. Meanwhile, uh, even going on tonight, police are quite cordoned off a section of the landfill where uh, the trash from Saturday morning, the day of the morning after uh, Robert disappeared, has been held, and they haven't really sifted through that yet, but they're keeping it there just in case. And tonight they're at a house um, that is where that no one's yet 100% sure how it's connected to it, but uh, they're searching a house in another part of town uh, looking for evidence that uh, may be related there. So you're saying they're conducting a search right now as we speak of a home? It, yes. Um, it's... Um, it's, in, like I say, a different part of the neighborhood. Um, we did talk to the, the people who own that home, and she says her renters uh, do know uh, the man will, so there is at least some connection there. Well, you know, to execute a search, you have to have probable cause, so you don't know anything else about what they believe is in that home? Well, nothing that the police have, have told us. They, uh, they, we, the, 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 land, the owner of the uh, house, says that there is, you know, there was a truck that was stolen and then returned uh, from there. And uh, she's not sure how that's tied in, but it's the only kind of unusual thing that she's known has happened there lately. So. Right. Well, but the police are still not kind of, like, you know, as, they, as you know, they've been kind of tight-lipped this whole time, and tonight is no, no different. Sure, but you do know a little bit more about a search that was done uh, a little less than 24 hours ago at the mother of Robert's mom about uh, just about 24 hours ago tonight, right? Exactly. They went in about 8 o'clock our time, which is about 10 o'clock Eastern time, uh, into the apartment, uh, the apartment where he disappeared from. The boy The boy lives with his father in a rural town outside of Boise, but was, uh, has, his mother has visitation rights. She and her boyfriend live in this apartment in town. And uh, police uh, did go in there last night. Uh, they did get, uh, you know, they pulled stuff out of there. We don't know what. They um, they did grab some cars that were there. We're not even 100% sure whose cars they are, but they took them from that apartment complex. And uh, and they went back there this morning. They cordoned it off again. So they, uh, um, they've been back to that apartment at least twice in the last 24 hours. To Mark Class, president and founder of Class Kids Foundation, you know, this started out as a missing child who was playing in his yard at the apartment complex and wandered off because he wanted to go to a party. Things are turning around, aren't they, Mark? Well, things are turning around uh, in, 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 in some pretty awful ways, Gene. There's no question about that. A couple of things that stand out for me is, number one, despite the fact that this is taking the sour turn, over 2,000 people responded to law enforcement's call for volunteers to come out. I don't, in my experience, I don't think law enforcement ever asks for civilian volunteers to do something like this. So I think it's a, I think it's a, a testament to the, the spirit of volunteerism and the good work that volunteers can do in these kinds of searches that law enforcement understands this and they're taking advantage of it. Secondly, as I read through this and I see what this mother has done, that she that she cracked another child's skull like a walnut, and that the court record said that she did willfully inflict that injury, yet she was only charged with a misdemeanor 
29 days of work release and find $75.50. My goodness, if you're going to commit a crime against a child, I guess, well, I guess Boise, Idaho is the place to do it. <laughs> She is not a suspect in her son's disappearance, but to Detective Lieutenant Stephen Rogers, Nutley, New Jersey, if investigators are out at a landfill right now, they might be calling it a missing child investigation, but is that truly the case? I don't think so. Look, they have to investigate every lead, but these investigations begin at grand, ground zero, the victim's home. Don't be surprised if it ends at ground zero, the victim's home. To Eleanor Dixon, prosecutor out of Atlanta, your thoughts on what we're hearing tonight? Well, this doesn't surprise me because oftentimes in missing children cases, you're going to look at the people who are closest to the child and the person who last saw them. And I'm wondering whether or not the mother or her boyfriend have offered to take a polygraph to see if they can shed some light on this and perhaps show where they were and what they know. I'd like to see some of that done as well in this investigation. To Greg Hahn from the Idaho Statement, do we know if any uh, lie detector tests have been taken? Yeah, you know, we don't know that. Again, the police have been uh, real quiet about everything. The family has been quiet. They have a spokeswoman who, who really just shows up at press conferences, and we can't even get to her outside of that. It's an aunt of Robert's. Um, we did talk to a neighbor uh, today who said that he talked to the boyfriend. All right, um, and we will keep early. giving some updates on this case and let us hope for the best. Now, CNN Heroes.